as if you needed another reason to buy Facebook. Well, I think there is another reason, and it's basically because they're taking their knowledge and their experience and they're applying it to another field that they feel will enhance their future earnings, and that is biotech. And you know if you've watched my channel before, by the way, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer with Best of Us Investors, uh, you know that I'm very high on biotech. I believe, and I think Mark believes, that the biggest thing that has happened in our lifetime, no matter how old you are, is the coronavirus. And it is brought to the world's attention that we're vulnerable. We're vulnerable to viruses. We're also vulnerable to supply chain. And uh, we've got to make some adjustments. And I think the other thing that Mark has realized is that as a result of things like CRISPR and genome sequencing, the whole medical industry is going to change. And to sit back and not be a part of it just doesn't make a lot of sense, whether you're an investor or you're Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg or Google or Amazon or Apple. It just doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> it would be comparable to sitting back as the internet came forward and not participating. Did anybody do that? Yeah, Sears Roebuck did it. Um, the, the, look at uh, Xerox, look at uh, Kodak, the company I used to work for, Polaroid. They just basically ignored it. Well, today we have learned from those lessons and Mark has learned that he has some skills. Yeah, Facebook has some skills that are applicable to the, the world of medicine. And those are the algorithms that he uses to sort and, and categorize the data that he gathers from your participation on Facebook to basically predict what you're going to do next. And then he takes that data and, and knowledge that he's created from that data through artificial intelligence, intelligence and sells it to advertisers. Okay. So he, we know he uses the algorithm. We know he has it. What does that have to do with Facebook and, uh, and, and biotech? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And, and what I want you to understand is I don't talk about so much uh, what's going to happen tomorrow in the stock market. I just don't know. Uh, I don't control that. That's controlled by hedge funds and, and quantum computers and millisecond trading. And I just, I don't have access to that. What I have access to is my mind. And I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm good at logic. I look at things and say, okay, if this happens and this happens, I suspect this is going to happen. And I think that's what Mark is doing here. So um, let me get my notes together and let's talk about why, one more reason why I think you should own Facebook. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, Facebook is getting into the field and bear with me here. I'm going to put it, ask Jack to put it up in compositional perturbation automan coder. We're going to call it CPA. As most of you might know, I'm dyslexic. I'm not a good reader. My mind does not process three-syllable words, and we've got three three-syllable words here. So, Jack will put it down there so you can you can see what it is. We're going to call it CPA from here. CPA is an open source algorithm that Facebook has developed that basically does the same thing for pharmaceuticals and medical field that it does for Mark's advertising field. It takes a database and it sorts through it, and based on past data, it gives you some ability to predict what is going to happen in the future. That's how he sells advertising. Well, data 
doesn't know uh, or the algorithm doesn't know biotech data from personal data such as where did you eat lunch last week uh, and what kind of food do you like and where do you live and how old are you and who, who are your friends. That's what Facebook sells advertising against. But this algorithm, if it absorbs data about pharmaceuticals and people's health and cancer and Alzheimer's, it will come up with the same results. Now, it's open source, meaning that here it is, use it as you wish, uh, we, we will provide you the algorithm. And he's basically making it available to all the scientists and all the therapeutic people. And what I've learned is there are two separate parts to this. this there are the people who, who look at your body functions and try to figure out what's happening. And they do tests in test tubes and Petri dishes and create a knowledge base of how your body works. And that's people like CRISPR. Um, then there are people, or, or pharma, I guess pharmaceutical labs, okay? And then there are people who take that knowledge and say, okay, let's put it in, in human and animal cells and see how it reacts. Well, somebody has to gather all this knowledge and put it in one place and come to a conclusion. And through this CPA, they have found that they can come up with a 90% accuracy that says, if you combine this and this and this, you will get these results. And th these results may be, you don't help the person with cancer or you cure the cancer. What I'm telling you is this knowledge, this data is there, but the people who are developing or or creating this data aren't don't have al access to the technology and the algorithms to help them make better decisions. Does that make sense? Okay, so what Mark is saying, we have that ability. We have the artificial intelligence, we have we have the the, the ability to sort and slice and dice data. We want to make it available to you. Here it is. Okay. So why would Mark be doing this? Well, I think there's basically two reasons. One is Mark, Mark has been dealing with some, a lot of people saying you're a bad company, Mark, and we need to kind of shut you down and you're, a, you're violating people's privacy and you're putting hate speech up there. Every day there's something about the problems with freedom of speech and Facebook. Um, so here he's coming forward and saying, we're not the bad guys, we're the good guys. And in fact, we'll give you our knowledge and our experience and share it with you. No, no, no holds barred, it's, it's open source. Okay, that's reason number one, I think. Reason number two is a little bit more self-serving. You, and I, and I've talked about this before, have been basically sharing our data for free in order to get services for free. Those services are Facebook, where we can share our pictures of our kids and our grandkids and each other with our friends, our family, and some people who call themselves our friends, but we don't really know who they are. Um, and, so, and so it's a fun place to go. It's the place where you sit there and scroll through your phone and smile. And, and it, it, so it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing for the most part. What they don't have is your more personal data. The most valuable data at this point in our life on this earth is your medical records. Trust me. Your medical, again, because of the, the pandemic and what it's woken us up to, and because of genome sequencing and CRISPR and the, 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 the things that are going to happen in the medical field in the next three to five years, the most valuable asset on this earth are your medical records. Because 
once your medical records are tied together with what the pharmacies are doing, what the what the biotech people are doing, the the medical delivery system is going to change dramatically. I, I, I have talked about, in fact, I was talking to um, s- someone in, in the hospital business yesterday uh, about smart toilets. And he said, what would I need a smart toilet for? And I said, because it's going to have a 5G probe in the bottom of it, and it, it's going to analyze your poop and your pee and send it into the cloud and compare it with everybody else's <clears throat> poop and pee and come back and on your phone tell you whether you have cancer, whether you have the muscular dystrophy, whatever. It's it, whether you have a virus. And he says, well, I don't know if I want my poop or pee analyzed. I said, well, that's going to be entirely up to you. But when the next virus comes, do you think you might give it up? And he, he said, well, who's making this? And I said, well, um, Harvard's working on it and Stanford's working on it. At least those are the two I know of. Um, and he said, well, he says, I wish I'd known that before because I just had to pay a whole bunch to report, a bunch of money to repair the toilet I've got. And I didn't get a smart one. So, and, and again, you may be saying, saying that's never going to happen. I'm never going to give that kind of information up. Well, you're probably the same person who said, I'm never going to allow my credit card to, to be on the internet. But it is. If you're, if you're buying anything from Amazon or, or any place else. So this is why Facebook wants to get into this. Um, Google wants to get into it. Apple wants to get into it. They are trying to establish the conditions under which you will happily, willingly surrender your metal records as much as easily as you have surrendered your photographs and your Google search and your choice of music. You, you've given that all up. This is the one thing you haven't given up yet. And this is the gold. This is the oil. This is the most coveted piece of data in the world. So Mark is saying, open source. Here it is. Uh, we'll give you what we've got. You use it as you wish. And then he's going to wait and see what happens and where that takes the world. And then he will say, where does Facebook fit into it? So with that in mind, then let's come back to our selfishness of how does that affect me? Well, number one, it may save your life, but currently I would say, um, you need to buy Facebook if you don't already. Uh, it, it's something I keep coming back to. Over 50% of my portfolio sits in the, in the big six and Tesla. Um, they're the people with the money. They, they're the people who, if you've watched the earnings for the last uh, two weeks, you've seen ridiculous numbers of cash flowing into their pockets as a result of your data. Uh, And so they've got the money. I I did a video just the other day, I guess it was maybe yesterday, I don't know, about how I'm building a a trust fund for my three grandchildren that are going to be made up of these companies. Facebook wasn't in it, at that time, I may add it as we go if Grandpa feels a little bit more benevolent to his grandchildren. But these are the companies that are going to change the way you and I live, much as they have already changed the way I, we live. And they don't have the restrictions of, as Mark has just shown us, well, we do advertising and we do Facebook. And, and that's all about social media. And, because they have so damn much money and they have so much knowledge, they can do anything they want. And what I just said a little earlier, recognize the most important event that has happened in your life 
It was not World War II. It was not 9-11, which were both very important. It was not the invention of the internet. It was not the invention of social media. And it was not the invention of the mobile phone. Those are all important. And they have all changed the way you live and will live. But this coronavirus and genome sequencing and CRISPR and your health and my generation, the baby boomers, 79 million of us, facing the ultimate test called death, don't want to die. And if there's a way we can increase our lifespan, we're going to do it. And we own most of the money. So we're going to make it happen. And Mark has just stepped up and said, hey, all you baby boomers, let me help you out. So invest in Facebook. Invest in the future. Don't worry about what's happening on the market. I'm looking. I think I'm up a little bit today. But position your portfolio for what's going to, how the world is going to change and then play into it. And then, then do yourself the next favor that I talk, I'm talking more and more about. Figure out what these changes are and what you've got to help facilitate and build a new company. Become an entrepreneur. You are, you are in a position right now that is just, never been available to an entrepreneurial mind because the chain is going to come so rapid that right now there, I think there are 2,600 billionaires in the world. There's a new one born every 36 hours as a result of change. You can be one of those. Okay. That's my take for Sunday. Um, We'll talk again on Tuesday uh, about how you can become a billionaire, and I'll share you with you more of what I'm doing to help Carrie become a billionaire because I've connected some dots, and every day another dot appears, just like I got a I got an email today from Kitty, and she said, you know, would you like to come on to my radio show and uh, talk about musicians? and uh, live music and where it's going. And I said, well, I don't know much about live music, but there is something else I can talk about that might interest your audience. So stick with me. Uh, Every day is a, a, a new adventure. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow.